You cannot do this, Algernon. You swore that we would give up our commands when this horrific war was over. Our people need our leadership. If you're unwilling, leave. Our people must rebuild, and we must help unite them. So, we did not fight for freedom, but to conquer this land and our own. We fought to win, and now the Evanuris are as gods. I do not answer to Mithal's annoying lapdog. The people are afraid. They must believe in something. They need strength. And wisdom. They need gods who can protect them. We are not gods. You will learn that. Every lapdog hides a wolf inside. That was strange. They were speaking Alvin, but I understood it. I believe we have experienced a memory in each of our native languages. Not just any memory. One of the Dread Wolves. And the mages who declared themselves my gods. Well, mine and Davrin's. Given what we've seen them do, I was expecting someone to do something epic. Right? It was so mundane. Nothing grand or cosmic. No setting fire to the sun. It was just talking. Politics. I wish they were monsters. Something grand and terrible. Seeing them like that, they're no better than Tevinter nobles. But no worse, either. They were people. And people can let you down. All right. What else can we take from this memory? Elgrinon was hungry for power. Did anything he could to get it, and to hold on to it. Then Solus, furious at Elgernon's installing himself as a despot, started his rebellion. There's another moving part in this. Mithal. She was keeping the peace. Mithal and Solus were close. The Inquisition found a temple to Mithal, and there were wolf statues everywhere. Then she sides with Elgernon over him. A betrayal. I think I get where Mithal is coming from. Really? You've just finished some big war. Everyone is exhausted, and now Elgernon won't give up power. If Mithal sided with Solus, would Elgernon have backed down? Not a chance. It would have led to another war. Mithal tried to keep the peace. And Solus must see that, but still can't accept that she chose peaceful politics over his ideals. Perhaps these murals aren't simply memories. They're what Solus wishes to forget. His regret. That means they're a way to learn his weak points. Why are we worried about Solus? He's trapped. Right. But the Dread Wolf was the god of trickery. He's looking for a way out. Bet on it. Meanwhile, keep your eyes open in the crossroads. If there's a way to restore the rest of these murals, Solus would have kept it in his hideaway. It'd be nice to get inside his head for a change. not certain you would come. You were the one who walked away. I never turn my back when my friend needs me. The Evanuris seek the magic of the Blight. Impossible. The Blight is safely sealed away forever. No, oh, I wish I could believe you. I have sensed the breaking of the wards. I will investigate your claims. If they forget the danger of the Blight, I will endeavor to remind them. What if instead you left the Evanuris? and remained with me. Do you not wish for freedom from this struggle? Be at peace, love. I will stop them. As you must. The Blight is our mistake. Did Mithal call Solus love in that memory? That's what it sounded like. 
So they were doing it. The elven gods were free with their emotions. They felt things deeply. The way they expressed things, well, it feels romantic to us, but that wasn't really how it was. Back then, I mean. Nah, they were doing it. Oh, they were absolutely doing it. Being with someone you're rebelling against? Doesn't sound like Solus. He also met her in secret and talked about how they could run off together. It sounded so tragic and romantic. Oh, wait. Never mind. That does sound like him. So the Dread Wolf goes to Mathal. They might be fighting, but they have history. And he warns her about the other god using the Blight. That's more important than his rebellion. It's like kingdoms coming together when an archdemon rises. Mithal didn't think it was possible. She said the Blight was sealed away. There's an old legend about it. Davern, the one with Andrul's armor? Not sure it matters. We're deep in elven lore already. What's the legend say? Right. Well, Andrul was the goddess of the hunt. She put on armor, magic armor, made us something called the Void. Drove her mad. I remember this one. The other gods were afraid Andrul would turn on them. She was doing all kinds of horrible things, causing plagues. It does sound like the Blight. Well, it all ends with Mithal fighting Andrul. After, Mithal turned into a dragon. She what? Why didn't you start with that? Anyway, she took Andrul's armor away. Then Andrul's madness left, and peace returned. Intriguing. So it's possible Andrul stumbled onto the magic of the Blight. And when Andrul went mad, Mithal took it from her and locked it away. Until someone started using it again. Okay, Solus warns Mithal about the other gods using the Blight. It's not just bad, it's something bad he feels responsible for. The Blight was our mistake. How is the Blight their mistake? Do they find it? Do they make it? What does that mean? Whatever it was, it convinced Mithal to take him seriously. So Mithal goes off to investigate what Solus says. Then, what? It's too clean. Seems plenty messy with them doing it. But this isn't just a memory. It's something Solus wanted to hide. What's the crime? What did we see here that he feels guilty about? I think I might know. When the Inquisitor was saving the world from the Breach, he met Mithal. What? Like, in a dream? It was complicated. She helped the Inquisition. There was a magic pond and a dragon. Nice! The point is, she also said the other elven gods betrayed her. Killed her. Okay, sorry. Point of order. If they killed Mithal, how was she still around to help the Inquisition? Elven god magic? She'd spent centuries gathering strength and sharing people's bodies, I think. If it was a truly benign possession, that speaks to her character. Solus tried to do the right thing by warning Mithal about the other gods using the Blight, but he got her killed. Well, it's not just that she died. What do you mean, Tosh? It's... Ugh. There was stuff he wanted to tell her, but he waited too long. And then she was dead. He never got to make it right. That twists you up. That's it. There's our crime. Doesn't really tell us anything we can use, though. We know more than we did. That's something. Then I guess we keep our eyes open if we come across more of these memories. Just jealous of our growing power. You will pay the final price for this betrayal. We warned you not to use the blight. For this and for Mathol, I sentence you to sleep in exile ever after. Your own lives will form the veil that keeps the horror you unleashed at bay.
So he locked the gods away and created a veil between this world and the Fade. I mean, they were terrible, no question. But what he did, it didn't just stop them. It destroyed our culture, our world. It wasn't just to stop them. It was to stop the Blight. We've seen how bad Elganon and Gilanane are. Imagine all seven corrupted gods running wild. So he created the Veil just to keep the Elven gods locked in their prison? Yes, to keep them from accessing the Fade. But was the creation of the Veil around the world an accident? You heard him yelling. That's not the sound of a ritual going right. What do you think, Rook? When I joined the Shadow Dragons, the first thing they told me was to remember why we were fighting. We protect those who couldn't protect themselves. You don't start fights that could endanger bystanders. I know Solus had to stop the gods, but a lot of innocent people died because of his big, flashy trap. Fair odds he agrees with you. That's why he's ashamed of this memory. I had another question, and I'm sorry, maybe this doesn't matter, but... Solus trapped the Blighted Gods in an ancient elven building, right? That's what it looks like. Maybe a palace? Fancier than what I've seen in Arlathan, at least. And then, the Magisters were lured into the Fade. They broke in, which let the Blight escape, and turned the Golden City black. Right, and the Black City hangs in the Fade, a little reminder of their mistakes. What's wrong, Lace? It's just... The Chant of Light says that the Maker built for them the Golden City, the center of all creation. But if the Golden City was an ancient elven palace, then the Maker didn't build it. The elves did. The Chant of Light is Andraste's visions from the Maker, but it sounds like it's... wrong. You're asking if we just disproved the entire Andrastean faith. Did we? The Maker was never my faith, Lace, but I don't think you have to give it up. But what they taught us was just wrong. What if the Maker just doesn't exist? The chance of light might be wrong, but it's been made and changed by people over a thousand years. There was a whole verse about an elf named Chartan, and the Chantry just cut it out. So maybe the Golden City was meant as a metaphor. Or maybe it was added because of politics. That might change the history, but it doesn't have to change your whole faith. The Dalish clans are struggling with the same thing. What do we keep? What do we lose? The Elven Gods, the Maker. No matter who you light a candle to, you've got some hard questions to ask yourself right now. Doctrine is not the truth. It is one of many paths to the truth. I recognize the sentiment, though not the specific quote. Who said that? My mother. Ah. Questions of faith aside, we have some very real gods that still need killing. Looks like there are three more of these murals with the Dreadwolf's old memories. Wonder what else he's hiding. so long observed the world. Why not consider joining it? But I have no desire to live as humans. I have the fade. Besides this talk of taking on a solid form, I think you underestimate the danger. When you took the glowing stone to build your body, did the earth not shake? Delirium gives us the strength we had when we were of the fade. We are the best of physical and spirit. I need your wisdom. Solus, to withstand the louder voices who would go too far like Elganon, I need you. This is madness. You must know that. I will always follow where you go. What? This is astounding. 
The ancient elves were spirits who voluntarily manifested a physical form. I'd rather go back to talking about the Blight. Hey, Lucanus, could Spite turn into an elf? No. Sorry, but... what? This puts all of elven history in a new light, not to mention what we think about spirits. I mean, some magic works differently for elves. If we came from spirits, that'd explain it. The knowledge that an entire people were formed from a mass manifestation could change our entire understanding of magic. If we let it out, is that the right call? Do you want bigoted humans yelling about how elves are demons? Davrin's got a point. World's not short on small-minded humans. If the world learned about this, and it led to attacks against elves... Elves have enough trouble as it is down in Ferelden. We have to tell someone, though. Strife and Irulan, at least. If I told Thea and Viago, they'd think I was sampling Viago's poison collection. No one would believe us. Okay. We keep this to people we trust who have good reason to know. No shouting it from the rooftops. Agreed. The Morn Watch has a great deal of experience keeping dangerous secrets. So, beyond the world-shaking stuff, what else did we learn here? Solus himself was a spirit. What kind do you think he was? Well, his name is Elvin for pride. Oh, okay. There's something else. Not about spirits, or not all about them at least. Solus didn't want to become a person with a physical body. Right. He only agreed after Mathal begged him. Then that's his regret. He wishes he'd never taken physical form. Maybe, but not just that. Solus was scared. They built their bodies out of lyrium, and it made the ground shake. You think the ground shaking was the Titans? It makes sense, doesn't it? Something was hurting them, taking their blood. So they struck back, like we'd swat a stinging bug. The first memory we saw with Elganon seizing power, it happened at the end of a war. A war between the Titans and the Elves. And we just saw how it started. It feels like we still don't have the full picture. But I think that's part of what Solus regrets. He didn't see the danger. Except he did. He was worried. You said it yourself. He did it for Nithal. Everything that followed, he could have prevented if he just told her no. Then he's got a war on his conscience. Plus, whatever we find next. Have you created what we need? With this, the proper ritual will sunder every titan from its spirit. But you must know those severed dreams will certainly be driven mad. A disembodied blight of pain and anger. It is awful what we're doing. And the only way to end this war. Solus made the weapon that killed the Titans. No, not killed. He cut away their dreams and left them broken and mindless. He passed me in the halls of Skyhold for a year. He made polite conversation and he knew. He knew what he did. No mystery why he wants to forget this. As a mage, and apparently a scholar, Solus doubtless regrets destroying the minds of the Titans. No, it's worse than that. That isn't what Solus regrets. Those severed dreams will be driven mad, a disembodied blight of pain and anger. Mierda. You can't. 
That's not possible. When a warden hears the calling, it's like a song in their mind. Sound familiar to you, Lace? The song of Lyrium. Of the Titans. We think of the Blight as this monstrous force with no mercy, no compassion. Evil incarnate. Instead, it's a caged animal. Mistreated and imprisoned for centuries. Until all it knows is fear. What does this mean for Darkspawn? Should we be trying to help them? I don't believe so. If the Blight is a corrupted dream, Darkspawn may be mindless manifestations of its anger. Right. They're not people. We're never going to get through to them. The Titans are a problem for later. We have Elgernon and Gilanane to deal with now. And then I want Solus to look me in the eye and answer for what he did. Each of these memories has been a deeper regret, and almost all of them involve Mithal. Only one mural left to uncover by my count. If we find it, we'll see what's worse than this. I knew that you would find me, soon enough. You need the power of a god, the strength that I alone still carry. The blighted Evanuris will soon break free from their prison. I must make a stronger one that can contain them. While the prison is important, it is not the only goal you seek. Why should I not tear down the veil and bring back immortality to all the elven people? They deserve it. The elven people of today do not deserve to see the world they love be torn apart to salve your conscience. I must fix what I have broken. I am sorry. As am I, old friend. Solus killed Mithal? After all that? Is this another memory from a different time? No. He wore that same outfit in the Inquisition. We knew Solus woke up in this world without most of his power. Now we know how he got it back. By killing the only other god around and stealing her power. All that epic magic and godly power. In the end, it comes down to love and murder. Same as always. All these memories are about Solus being sad that he was right and nobody else could see it. He was right about how becoming elves would lead to war with the Titans, but Mithal wouldn't listen. He was right that using the dagger on the Titans was evil, but Mithal wouldn't listen. He was so proud when he imprisoned the other gods. Finally, he got to prove that he was right. And they were wrong. Then he wakes up in our time and finds out he was wrong. The elves have nothing. The Blight's a constant threat. And Mathal's alive, somehow. But she still won't listen. But this time he'll show her. No matter what it takes. So, how does everything we know help us now? He's being honest about fighting the Blight. Whatever happens, he won't risk letting it back out into the world. Agreed. But he has a plan to escape that prison, and not one we'll like. He turned on Mithal. The one person he was actually loyal to. There's no way he won't turn on us. He's a spirit, or was once. He might be able to possess someone, affect minds, all the things spirits do. He created the veil. His very nature is tied to it. That will be a source of strength, but also a potential weakness. Mithal has them all messed up. Anything about her or Elgernon is going to make him angry. Sloppy. Solus thinks he knows what's best for everyone. Anything he does, he'll do while telling himself he's the hero. Uh, Solus has caused a lot of damage, but he's not like Elgonon, trying to wreck the world to rule it. 
He's trying to repair the damage he caused, and he knows he's made mistakes. There might be hope for him. You don't think he'll turn on us? Oh no, he's totally gonna turn on us. I mean after that. You have witnessed the Protector's tale, Dweller. Almost to its end. Almost? How can there be more? When the mighty fall, their echoes cross the ages. An audience is warranted. Speak with your visitor. She awaits you in the crossroads. Well met. How did you get here? I did tell you I had my ways through Alluvians when I introduced you to the Inquisitor, did I not? The Alluvians in general, yes, but not the Dread Wolf's crossroads. I would think you have more pressing questions at the moment. Questions about Solas and Mathal? Mathal? The two gods have always been linked, have they not? First, when Mithal bade her companion spirit to abandon the Fade and take on mortal form. Then, when Solar spilled Mithal's mortal blood, that he might absorb her power as his own. Wait. How do you know exactly what we saw of Solus's past? Think upon it, Rook. You saw for yourself in the Dread Wolf's memories. When Mithal stood against the gods' manipulations of the Blight, she was betrayed and struck down. Yet she survived and returned ages later to aid the Inquisition in its hour of need. How? So, if Mithal was originally a spirit, maybe that's how she survived her body's death? Very good. Mithal was a spirit turned elven. And when her body was struck down to spirit, she returned. Her essence sheltered in a willing mortal vessel. Over the centuries, she journeyed from host to host, slowly amassing her former power anew. Until once again, she was struck down, on this occasion, by Solus. He absorbed her power, but not her memories. Then where did they... wait. You? As you say. If your Mithal returned in Morrigan, we need your help with fighting the gods. And here I am, as you may notice. But there is something I must make clear. What? That was like how Elganon and Gilanane can talk in your head, but... Twas Mithal you heard. Her echoes. Yet, I am not the goddess returned. What are you, then? I once feared Mithal would consume me were I to carry her, but was not so. I remain free-willed and mortal. What I now possess is but a spark of Mithal, shadowed memories through which to sift for meaning. As to our admixture, I suspect you have questions. You would have met Solus in the Inquisition, right? I did indeed. Twas before I possessed Mithal's memories. At the time I thought Solus a scowling elven apostate whose sole passion was finding arguments. He heard me, in all my ignorance, expound on the histories of the elven people, explaining legends he had witnessed himself. Bet he loved that. Tis not a memory that brings me pride. How can you carry Mithal's soul if you're not an elf? Her spark has sheltered within both elves and humans who were sympathetic to her in thought and circumstance. 
Mathal's last host was a woman wronged, trapped by those sworn to love her. We may readily imagine their kinship. Do you have information we can use against Gilanane or Elganon, or Solus? The last time Mathal faced Elganon and Gilanane, she was struck down by the very dagger you now carry. What about Solus? You may recall he murdered Mathal's former host to claim her godly might as his own. I hoard no untapped magical secrets, Rook. What I do possess, I share freely with you and the Veil Jumpers. All right. So, there's the soul of an elven god inside you. How does that even happen? Mathal's last host was my mother, Flemeth. Oh. When I learned she intended me to become the next receptacle of an ancient god's soul, I feared naught would be left of my own. It inevitably came to pass on a deep night. I was awakened by the presence of a blaze of magic in the shape of a woman who both was and was not my mother. I don't think I'd recover from that. Neither did I, at the start. Mathal's memories were both gift and burden, this blazing woman told me, but I must accept them of my own accord. The decision was paralyzing. What would it mean to become such a host? What would be lost if I refused? In the end, it was something in my mother's voice which guided me. What was that? Regret. Not the regret of a god, but of a mother who knew she would never see me again. And so, my mind remains my own. What I gained was knowledge both Mathal's and of those who bore her. You didn't come out here just to tell me you're Mathal. I am not Mathal in her entirety, but yes. The Dreadwolf has occasion to visit you in dreams, where he portions out advice. And now, after finding his memories, you have peered into his deepest sorrows. Tell me then, what do you make of Solus? I should ask you. Mythal knew Solus better than anyone. I would influence your answer. Or do you mean to discover if I would stand directly against the Dread Wolf, were there a need? Would you? I shall aid you in any way but that, even had I the power. What has passed between Solus and Mythal? I beg you, do not ask this of me again. Solus talks a lot about what has to be done, being forced to make hard choices. But it's like he's trying to talk himself into it. I think, deep down, he doesn't entirely believe what he's saying. Tis exactly like the old wolf to tie himself into the most intricate knots. Tis not malice which made Solus your opponent, but conviction. A belief that only he may halt what he set in motion. Yet Solus was once beloved of Mathal. Tis his very loyalty and love for his people that led to the tragedy we now face. You may be in a position to determine how it ends, more so than either of you might realize. Maybe there's a way we all get what we want. Do you truly believe such a thing? Well, maybe at least what we deserve. If you would shape the outcome of your battle, I've one last secret to share. When Mathal was struck down by the other gods, it was with her own Lyrium dagger, the dagger you now carry. Solus recovered it from Elganon, and from it extracted a fragment of Mathal that had lain hidden within its depths. This fragment, a younger sister to the one I carry, if you will, resides here, in the crossroads. I can open the way for you, Find her, survive the encounter, and the essence you obtain will aid you in times to come. A 
another fragment of Mithal, in addition to the one inside you. You are aware of what the word fragment means, are you not? One small piece of many, formed when something greater is broken. The first elves were spirits, as you well know, and when a spirit is broken, it may shatter into pieces, each holding part of the original. Among the ancient elves who became known as gods, Dirthamon and his brother, Falondine, are but one example. You make it sound like this piece of Mithal is going to attack me. You know Solus, and have seen Elganon, and memories of Mithal. They are creatures of emotion, as all spirits are. The fragment of Mithal that resides in me lived among mortals for thousands of years. She has grown wiser and more patient. This younger sister has not. She is the essence of Mithal as a god. She is unlikely to listen to polite requests, and though she is but a fragment of the goddess, the battle will test you sorely. If she's just going to attack us, why tell us about her at all? We have enough enemies already. A fragment of a god's essence is a powerful thing. It may give you options against Elgonan and Gelanane, or against the Dreadwolf himself, should he prove as cunning and treacherous as ever. If I were to try to talk with her, do you have any suggestions? She will demand respect, but detest flattery. She appreciates righteous anger, but will not tolerate pity. She is, for want of better phrasing, prickly. But if you are determined to try, then I wish you luck. You would know this aspect of Mithal better than anyone. Could you try talking to her? I dare say she would attack me on sight. Spirits can't get along with fragments of each other. Spirits, certainly. But the aspects of a self-righteous god who have walked different paths for ages? One bears the insult of her betrayal by the Evanuris, and then by Solus, as fresh wounds, insult upon injury. The other once fell in love with an Alamari chieftain and lived happily in a swamp for centuries. Each reminds the other that another path existed, that they could have been wrong, and nothing angers Mathal like being wrong. What kind of spirit was Mithal before she became an elf? I know Solus is elven for pride. Mithal enjoyed ruling and having power, but it came not from the overweening desire to crush resistance, as is the case with Algernon. The emotion that inspired her might best be described as benevolence, a guiding hand inclined to kindness. But like any spirit, when angered or twisted against her purpose, a more violent aspect arose. Where the Dreadwolf's wisdom gave way to pride when the world did not meet his standards, Mathal's benevolence gave way to retribution. After all, when kindness fails, the guilty must be punished. Thank you for the information, Morrigan. I only ask that you reflect upon what I have said. The Dreadwolf is not so apart from the world as he thinks. There, you have the advantage of him. Getting close to where Morrigan said that other fragment of Mithal was.
supposed to be a... We talking or fighting? Guess we'll find out. You are Rook. I have seen you and your companions. We made ourselves bodies to be like humans, but I never expected to see humans scurrying about in the Dread Wolf's crossroads. And you know who I am? Mythal. The part of me that survived betrayal by the rest of the Evanurus, if this can be called surviving. Solas. He drew me from the dagger that struck me down, but what is left of me can only survive here. I cannot return to the world, and even the true Fade is denied me. All I can do is watch. Why are you here? To beg me to give up what remains of myself to help you defeat the monsters Elganan and Gilanane have become? Or do you simply think yourself ready to fight a god? I came here to ask for your help. The gods have endangered the world and- You dare explain to me what they are doing. You are a thousand years from knowing the proper words. We saw Solus's memories, his regrets. You saw the recollection he cultivated like a tree twisting to catch the sun. You wish for my help? Convince me. Make your case, and I will yield my essence willingly to help you against Elganan and Gilanane. Fail, and I shall kill you for wasting my time, or you will kill me and obtain my essence in doing so. A harder-edged, simpler version. It has been centuries since a petitioner stood before me, so why should I help you? If I don't stop the gods, the whole world will be corrupted by the Blight. That is why you must succeed, so tell me why I must help you. We know the truth about the Blight. We know it came from the imprisoned dreams of the Titans after you and Solus defeated them. Anne? Stopping the Blight mattered enough for you to talk with Solus even after he rebelled against you. It mattered enough for you to stand against the other gods. And I was struck down for doing so, betrayed by those I had ruled beside for centuries. You made the difficult choice to protect your home because it was the right thing to do. Help me do the same. Not bad, but not enough. Let us speak of something else. You can't want Elganan and Gilane to rule the world. Not after what they did to you. I ruled alongside them for centuries, I bear them no love now, and they were ever flawed, as all rulers are. Yet the world needs rulers. So set the Blight aside, and tell me why I should help you topple them. What they did to you was wrong. And you care so deeply for the injustice done to me thousands of years ago. You deserve justice. And they deserve to be punished for misusing their power and killing you when you try to check them. If you wish to prove your worth, you must do better than that. I am worthy of your help. That is for me to judge. I am fighting to protect this world. Any petty tyrant can fight those who come to their land and claim to be protecting their people. I have seen rulers, human as you are, the mages of Tevinta, following in the Elven Empire's footsteps. They build nothing that does not serve them. Why should I believe you are any better? What is a protector to you? It's making a place that's safe for everyone. That means defending against danger. But it also means building a strong community that works together for the common good. And what have you built? Look at my team. We're not just hired blades. We started as strangers and grew together into a family. Your arguments are... compelling. I find you worthy, Rook. I have spent thousands of years watching. I shall miss that. But if what I am can protect the innocent and smite the guilty... This is what remains of me. I give it to you freely. Use it to protect this world with kindness when possible and cunning when necessary. 
I will. Thank you. I offer one further boon. I cannot enter the physical world or the pure fade, but in this place, I still carry some power. Evil has intruded here. The blight, seeded by Elganon and Gilanane. Find it, and when you meet your greatest challenge, I will fly one last time. The essence of a god. Like a piece of the sun, I've never felt something so... alive. So the dragon lady came through. Now what? The god knows her moment. At least her essence does. When the time comes, we'll be ready. We did it. We got Mithal's essence. Morgan made it sound like she was gonna fight you. But she gave you her magic stuff just from you talking at her a bunch. Not sure what we do with it just yet, but if Morrigan's telling the truth, it'll come in handy at some point.